The Dog That Dug for Dinosaurs, a true story, written by Shirley Ray Redman and illustrated by Simon Sullivan. Ooh, look at all of those fossils <gasps> and footprints. The Dog That Dug for Dinosaurs. A long time ago, there was a dog named Trey. He was black and white all over. He had friendly brown eyes and a very wiggly tail. Trey lived in England. Trey was a real dog, and this is an honestly true story about him. Trey loved two things in the whole world. First, he loved Mary Annie. That was his owner. She was 12 years old and lived with her family in a small cottage near the beach in Lyme Regis. Secondly, Trey loved going with Mary Ann to dig for fossils. So what are fossils anyway? They are the remains of animals and plants that died a long time ago. When a leaf or a bone gets preserved between layers of sea and mud, it leaves an imprint. After many, many years, the mud hardens to rock. Trey and Marianne knew they would find the very best fossils high up on the cliffs around the beach. They climbed up there every day. Trey sniffed the rocks. <laughs> he pawed the dirt. <laughs> and Mary Ann used a small hammer and chisel. Tap, tap, tap. With these tools, Mary Ann carefully cut fossils out of the cliff, just as her father had shown her. Trey watched as she placed the fossils in her basket. Most of them look like seashells. Mary Ann and Trey sold them as souvenirs to the tourists that came by Stagecoast to swim at the beach near their home. One day, Trey and Mary Ann discovered some very large bones sticking out of the rocks. They were huge! Trey growled and tried to dig the bones out. Mary used her hands to brush away the loose dirt. Trey! We had discovered a monster, she declared. The bones were much too big for Trey and Mary to remove by themselves. So Mary said, I'll go ask for help. You stay here, Trey. Trey barked loudly whoop, and sat down in front of the bones. He was a very good guard dog. Mary went all the way back to town and asked some grown-ups to help her. Trey and I have found some really special things in the cliff, she told them. Just wait and see. When the men saw the giant rib bones on the side of the cliff, they were amazed. What a beast, they cried. Look at those sharp teeth. Is it a crocodile, one man asked, or a stubby whale? We don't know what it is, Mary admitted, but we know it's something special, don't we, Trey? Trey yipped and wagged his tail. A rich man who lived nearby heard about the sea monster, and he hurried to see for himself. I will buy it, he said, and I'll give it to the British Museum in London. Do you know what it is, Mary asked? It is called an ichthyosaur, the man told her. Ichthyosaur? Yes, that means fish lizard, he explains. It's a dinosaur, but with fins. The amazing news spread about the gigantic fish lizard and the dog and little girl who had found it. Soon, many strangers came to Lyme Regis where Mary and Trey lived. They wanted to ha hunt for fossils too. The men wore tall top hats and the women wore frilly bonnets. They carried pretty little umbrellas called parasols. Mary Ann shook her head and smiled. She rubbed Trey's soft ears. They watched the strangers together. They don't have the right tools, Mary whispered. They're wearing the wrong kind of shoes, aren't they? <laughs> Trey yipped whoop, and chased his tail. Curious scientists visited Lyme Regis too. One man from the university in Oxford was named William Buckland. He went to the old carpenter shop where Mary and Trey had sold their fossils. Can you show me where you found your ichthyosaur, young lady, he said. Do you think you could find the exact spot again? Trey can find it, Mary boasted. And together, Mary and Mr. Buckland followed the little dog across the beach and up the cliffs. Trey sniffed the rocks and he pawed the dirt. Scritch, scritch. Suddenly he yipped 
Then he sat down. Mary pointed. It was the exact place where she had discovered the strange fist lizard. What an intelligent dog, Mr. Buckland declared, and Trey wagged his tail. Trey and Mary Ann continued to dig for fossils. They were very careful. Mary, t Mary watched for fallen rocks, like her dad told her. Trey looked out for storms and high tides. Then one day, they discovered another giant creature. Look, Trey, Mary cried. Is it a sea dragon? Trey sniffed the skeleton and snapped at it with his teeth. The creature had a long, long neck and his backbone was humped like a turtle shell. But instead of feet and legs, it had four large paddles. It wasn't a sea dragon. Mr. Buckland called it a plesiosaur. Plesiosaur. One day, Trey and Mary Ann found a fossil that no one in England had ever found before. It had huge bony wings like a bat and a long sharp jaw. Trey growled. Brrr. It looked like a gigantic flying lizard, Mary said. The scientists thought so too, and that's why they named it pterodactyl. And that means lizard with wings. Over the years, Trey, Mary, and Mr. Buckland became good friends. They showed him where to find the best fossils in Lyme Regis. Mr. Buckland bought books about dinosaurs for Mary. He bought beef bones for Trey. Mary Ann, Mary with Trey on her lap, studied the books every day. When Trey's whiskers turned gray and Mary was all grown up, they still collected fossils and sold them in the old carpenter shop. There were boxes and baskets filled with fossils on the floor. Some of the fossils were so big they couldn't even fit through the door. Sometimes children and tourists stopped to buy fossils and ancient sand dollars or tiny, tiny fish and curly shells. Many scientists came to the shop to buy fossils too. They bought carts and wagons to haul the very large ones away. Once a German king stopped at the shop to buy fossils for his collection. And so did the Duke of Buckingham. Trey and Mary became very famous. Today, if you go to the Natural History Museum in London, you can see the large fossils they discovered together. You can also see a famous painting of Mary Annie holding her fossil basket. And you can see Trey, the dog that dug for dinosaurs. The end.